All right, good evening. Welcome to the City Council Chambers. I'm going to call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Monday, February 15th. If the council members could all press your I and confirm button. Eleven are present, Your Honor. All right. So we have a quorum and we'll proceed. If you'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, as leaders of the community of Green Bay, let us be an example of people who use the gifts you've given each of us as we collectively work to build a community of opportunity and faith for Greater Green Bay. This month we celebrate National Cancer Prevention Month in an effort to support the education, awareness, and research to fight all types of cancer. We're grateful for the medical community and charitable organizations who work diligently to help our society live a healthy lifestyle and also help us to reduce the risk of cancer for our community. Tonight we also welcome Andrew Smith as the new Chief of Police for the City of Green Bay. Watch over him and bless Chief Smith, his family, and his department as they continue to keep our community connected with each other and safe from those who want to harm us. Continue to bless our community with kindness, and as always, we ask you to be with our military personnel, especially those serving on the USS Green Bay. We ask this all in your name. Amen. All right, with that, I'll ask for approval of the minutes of the January 18th. There's a motion by Alderman Nicholson, second by Alderman Tom DeWayne, to approve the minutes of the January 18th meeting. Anything here you want to... Corrections or deletions, see no lights, all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed and nays, the ayes have it. The minutes of the January 18th meeting have been approved. We're now looking for uh, a motion for approval of the agenda. There's a motion by Alderman Randy Scannell, second by Alderman Tim DeWayne, uh, to approve the agenda. Anything you want to change here? See no lights, all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed and nays, the ayes have it. The agenda before you has been approved. Report by the mayor. All right, just two quick things. Again, I uh, want to welcome Chief Smith to the city of Green Bay. Um, many of you were here at his swearing in uh, two weeks ago on Monday. Uh, I know some of you have had the opportunity to meet with him. Um, I mean, this this is the right guy at the right time for the city of Green Bay. Um, although he hails from the West Coast, he grew up in the UP, so he's got those good work ethic and good values, and we're glad to have him on board. Um, just, uh, again, I... Chief, welcome. We're, we're glad you're here. I know you've met some of the aldermen and all the city staff. And um, just uh, officially want to show you to the rest of Green Bay because a lot of people do watch us on cable television. So, ladies and gentlemen, Chief Andrew Smith, welcome. Thank you Say anything? <laughs> Sure, you bet. Uh, I just want to say thank you. It's been great. The first two weeks I've been here has been fantastic. Exactly what I expected, you know, with the reputation of the city of Green Bay, and I couldn't be happier and prouder to be here and be raising my family in the city of Green Bay. All right, thank you, Chief. All right, and secondly, the other thing I, um, as you know, I annually give my State of the City address where we look at really what we've done, but more importantly, what we're going to do. And that uh, address has been uh, set up for March 29th uh, at 4.30 p.m. at the Meyer Theater. Uh, we've had it there the last 12 years, and we'll continue that. So March 29th, you'll all be, uh, of course, get invitations to that. And that will conclude my report. We're on to announcements. Under announcements, we'll start with Alderman Joe Moore. Thanks, Your Honor. I have uh, just two. Uh, the first is that there will be a uh, town hall style meeting on children's mental health. Um, in regards to the USA Today um, Kids in Crisis in Wisconsin uh, programming that's been uh, in the Press Gazette lately. Um, that will be Tuesday, February 23rd at the Central Library. It runs from 7 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Um, I think all of the alders may have got an invite emailed over to them today, so they should have that information. Uh, that meeting is, of course, open to the public. Uh, the other is uh, another pretty cool thing in recognition for our city. 
Uh, the Green Bay Parks and Rec uh, Department is at the forefront of the health and wellness initiatives in our community. And as a result of Fit in the Parks, Fit Fest, our uh, new Parks RX program, in partnerships with local health care providers, the Parks and Rec Department was chosen as one of the national top five agencies uh, for playing a vital role in public health. Uh, this past week, our Rec Division presented at the National Symposium in Indiana at Indiana University. Um, the Green Bay model, City of Green Bay Parks, uh, and Prevea Health's Prescribe to be Fit program. We are proud that our Green Bay model has been recognized as one of the top five programs in the nation and through, um, that through innovative and bold approaches addresses community health issues through our services. Top five, Mayor. Well aware of that, yes. Congratulations to the Parks Department. All right, thank you, Alderman. We'll go to Alderman Nenning. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this Thursday, February 18th at 5.30, uh, NeighborWorks Green Bay will be having an open house of the Farmery Project. Uh, at 6 o'clock, they will have a guest speaker uh, who is Will Allen from uh, Growing uh, Power in Milwaukee, uh, which uh, is a very successful urban farming operation uh, similar to what is proposed here. So uh, if you want to learn more, uh, feel free to uh, join NeighborWorks uh, this Thursday, uh, 5.30 uh, starting and 6.30 for the speaker. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Just put in a plug for Will Allen. Uh, we've been down to his place in Milwaukee a number of times, and he's very sought after. Um, he speaks all over the country. We're lucky to get him here. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Alderman Jerry with Spisky announcements. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, recognize the uh, Parks Department for the great job. We actually had a really upbeat meeting at, uh, at our last Parks Committee meeting, and uh, the reports about Bay Beach... Uh, we had a gentleman there who just uh, exuberant uh, with powerful uh, things accomplished and everything. And uh, he's talking about uh, decreasing our 20-year plan down to, he was at seven. And I think when we left the meeting, he was down to five already of uh, adding stuff and improving the park. And uh, the park is a great success, of course, and you can read it all about it in the minutes. Uh, and here we go. I'm the first one for this one. Holy Cross Lenten Fish Dinners, Bay Settlement Road at Holy Cross Gym, February 19th, March 4th, and March 18th. Serving from 5 to 7.15. Prices, Bay Caddock or Fish Tacos, regular, $9, large, $11. Macaroni and Cheese, $5. Can you make, believe that? They, they expanded the menu. I can't wait to see, hear anybody else really talking about this, but uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, uh, menu to include choice of uh, baked fish, fish tacos, mac and cheese with coleslaw, potato salad, applesauce, bread, and homemade desserts, and of course, beer and wine will be available for purchase, and you will probably be waited on by the alderman of the famous district number one. Thank you. Right, thank you, alderman. All right, we'll go on to alderman Danzinger. Thank you, Your Honor. Just two quick announcements. Uh, this Thursday, February 18th, uh, the Green Bay Chamber of Commerce will be uh, awarding and recognizing the Future 15, which are the young professionals here in our community. Uh, we've been very fortunate that uh, the city of Green Bay actually has been well represented uh, through the uh, chamber uh, with these awards. In fact, uh, Alderman Joe Moore was one of the Future 15 recipients a couple of years ago, uh, former Alderman Ned Dorf. Uh, again, this is a great way to highlight some of the dynamic, active, and uh, community-minded uh, professionals that are here in Green Bay. We know as a city, one of our responsibilities is to retain and attract uh, young talent like this that uh, not only help build the community with their uh, professional skills, uh, but also support and advance the community through their volunteer efforts. So if you'd like to be part of this, uh, they still have tickets available, again, for February 18th, which is this Thursday. I know it's short notice. Uh, but again, it's a great uh, opportunity and event to meet some of these dynamic young people that are making a difference here in Green Bay, and uh, again, to recognize the work that they've contributed to the city. The second item uh, is the Brown County Volunteer Center is uh, taking nominations right now for their Volunteer of the Year awards. Uh, they are taking applications on their website, which is volunteergb.org, until Mach, Mach, sorry, March 4th. I just made up a month there. Uh, until March 4th. And uh, the awards are actually distributed on April 14th, but they're taking applications now for individual awards, which include the uh, Young uh, Volunteer Award, the Adult Volunteer Award, and uh, the 
Volunteer Leadership Award, as well, a couple, as, well as a couple of uh, group award categories. Uh, again, uh, there is uh, no cost to nominate individuals. It is a great way to highlight some of the people that are dedicating their time uh, here in Green Bay. These are fantastic uh, individuals and their stories. Uh, if, again, you get a chance to um, attend the award ceremony, it's going to be held April 14th. Uh, I believe, and it's a breakfast, so it is an early day. I usually get there around 8.30, but I believe it starts at 7. Uh, but uh, again, it is a great opportunity to highlight some of the special people that make a difference and an impact to our community. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Nenny, did you have anything else? All right. Alderman Wispisky, did you have anything else? All right. That concludes the announcements. Do you have anything? We're good. Okay, go ahead. We're on to public hearings. Public hearing regarding the vacation of a portion of unimproved right away at 1940 Main Street in zoning ordinance number 1 16, an ordinance rezoning property located at 2607 Nicolay Drive and parcel number 22 176 1 from low density residential district to general commercial district and 2603, 2611, and 2615 Nicolay Drive from general commercial district to low density residential district. So this is the public hearing for these two items. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to either one of these two items? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Anyone wishing to be heard? All right, we'll let the record show no one came forward. You may under suspension of the rules take up items 19 and 28 with a roll call vote. All right, so we have a motion by Alderman Joe Moore, second by Alderman Jerry Wisbisky to suspend the rules. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nays. The ayes have it. The rules are now suspended. Motion to adopt uh, by Alderman Tom DeWayne, seconded by Alderman Randy Scannell to adopt uh, Ordinance First Reading 22 and Ordinance Third Reading Item 28. And if you please use the board on both of these. All right, and those pass unanimously. Thank you. Okay, clerk, we can continue. We're on to rec recognition. Recognition of Officer Dave Schmitz for his Lifetime Achievement Award from the Wisconsin Association of Community-Oriented Police. All right. So, Chief Smith, if you want to join me up here, um, we have a recognition that um, has already been presented by the... Um, Wisconsin Association of Community Oriented Policing, but uh, I want to ask Officer Dave Schmitz to join me uh, as well as the chief. I mean, everybody knows this guy, but I'm going to go through it again. Um, Officer Schmitz joined the community policing program back in 1995. Yeah, right. Um, he he won. Uh, an award for his Operation One Step, where he worked to solve chronic community nuisance problems. Um, he's been working uh, with the Tank School Community Service Group uh, to build character, discipline, and promote cooperation and teamwork among fourth and fifth graders. Um, as you know, Officer Schmitz spends most of his free time at the Boys and Girls Club here in Green Bay, working on the Badgers for Basketball program, as well as Bring Your Own Five Basketball Tournament. Um, as you know, and I know there's people here who called and wanted to be here, Terry Ruffsgard, who uh, runs the best community shelter in the state, and um, I know there's other people that wanted to see you, and um, Dave, we just, uh, on behalf of the council, um, just, you are a great representative, uh, representative of the police department, uh, and deserving of the Community Policing Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, this is an outstanding award. Um, I know you got a fancy plaque from them. We're in budget cuts, so we only give you a certificate. <laughs> but I want to tell you that um, this says a lot more meaning from the heart. Uh, it's a certificate of recognition. It's presented to Officer Dave Schmitz for receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Wisconsin Association of Community Oriented Police. Um, it's dated today, February 16th, uh, signed by uh, myself, Mayor Jim Schmidt, uh, and the City Council. So thank you for all you do, Dave. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? Yeah, say something. Thank you. Just a couple of things. That uh, In 86 is when I was hired, 1986. So it's, <laughs> this, this is going to be my 30th year. Um, I won't make it that far. 
it looks like in uh, April, uh, 27th of April, tentatively, I'll be retiring. So um, thanks. And I've had the pleasure of working with just about everybody here. Um, it's been good. I'm so old that I, I actually chased Guy Zim around when he was a little boy. That's, <laughs> uh, so it was 1886. It was 1886. <laughs> um, that in my 30 years, the first 10 years I was in patrol, and then I had the opportunity to come on to uh, the department and work as a community police officer. And for me, it has just been absolutely amazing. Um, best thing that ever happened to me. For me and for my family. Um, Jim Vieser is here tonight, uh, my partner in crime. Uh, I did a little stint inside, and I had the opportunity to work with him. He's a legend. Um, went to West High, and uh, it just been, it's been a great career for me. So. Thank you. Congratulations on your award. You bet. Awesome. <laughs> We're on to appointments. New appointments, Green Bay Plan Commission, Lisa Hansen, mm -hmm. Transit Commission, Sierra Spaulding, on Broadway Business Improvement District Board, Brent Peters. Right, we have a motion by Alderman Tom DeWayne. Second by Alderman Mark Stoyer to approve the three new appointments. Any discussion here? All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nay. Thank you. Um, and congratulations. I know some of you are here. Reappointments Old Mean Business Improvement District Board, Jim Wyshynski. I entertain a motion to approve Mr. Wyshynski. Motion by Alderman Scannell. Second by Alderman Tom DeWayne uh, to approve the reappointment of Jim Wyshynski. Tom, did no, you want to? No, no, that's for the next one. Okay. I we took them all. Oh, all right. Um, we should, okay. Uh, all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed nays, uh, the ayes have it, and Jim has been reappointed. So um, thank you, Council, and, and thank you to the new appointees as well as Jim. All right, Clerk. We're on to referral of petitions and communications. On page one of your packet, you have all petitions and communications received by the clerk's office by noon on Thursday. We will not accept any late communications you may have. All right, we'll begin with Alderman Tom DeWayne. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is the traffic. And uh, to discuss with possible accident traffic problem on Euron Challenger and Ontario Streets, entering from the north, East Mason Street, uh, it's just a right turn problem. So all right. I talked to him already, so you'll understand it when he gets this. Thank you. Alderman Mark Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I have a number of them, so bear with me. <clears throat> uh, several are to traffic. The first one is North Platten has only one 25-mile-per-hour sign between Dalsman and Velp. I'd like to look into that see what we can change on that. Another one to traffic is to replace two-hour parking zone signs on Complace with no parking zone signs. Another one to traffic is to look at safer and more effective alternatives to the present trail signage on Shawano Avenue between Oneida and Fisk, and on North Military between Dalsman and Bond. We have another one for traffic. To look at the various school opening and closing times to see if there are safer and more efficient ways to deal with school, bus, and pedestrian traffic. I have one to historic preservation. To invite all interested public and private parties concerning the 414 North Maple property and potential historic planning initiatives on the Larson Green property to a meet and greet gathering at the Brown County Library Thursday, March 10th from 5 to 8 p.m. We have another one to law, law department or police and it, I would like to see an advisory document that would aid all the persons in the ways and means to alert neighbors to the moving in their area of registers, registered sex offenders. Though this is a state issue, the alders need advice on this matter. The last one is to planning. Uh, a zoning map and short reports showing the locations of R1, R2, R3, and R4 um, designations in the city and the percentage of each against total zoning. Also a land use map and short reports showing the locations of single family, two family, and multifamily in the city and the percentage of each against the total land use. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ron Alderman, Joe Moore. Thanks, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, to Public Works, uh, report on activities of our parking division in residential areas. And to the Mayor's Office, establish a committee of public and private partners focusing on connecting the community with the University of Wisconsin-Green Bay. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Tim DeWayne. 
Thank you, Your Honor. This is for planning to reconsider the zoning at the 1200 block of East Mason Street. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, I see no other lights. Chris, do you have any late communications? No, I do not. All right. With that, I'll entertain a motion to all. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Randy Scano, second by Alderman Dave Nenning uh, to refer all petitions and communications. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, the ayes have it. All petitions and communications have been referred to the proper authorities. Alderman Story, did you have anything else? Okay, Clerk. Reports for Council Action, report of the Park Committee. All right, we have a motion by Alderman Wispiski, and that was seconded by Alderman uh, Tom DeWayne to approve the report of the Park Committee. That was for the meeting held on Wednesday, February 10th. Are there any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed nays, the ayes have it, and that report has been approved. Report of the Plan Commission meeting of January 25th, 2016. All right, we have a motion by Alderman Tom DeWayne, seconded by Alderman Randy Scannell, to approve the report of the Plan Commission. This is for the meeting held on Monday, January 25th. Are there any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Number one. Number one. It actually comes up two weeks later, the exact same item, because it was held over. Well, I'm just saying the, the motion on here is to hold. The second item is to approve. So, all right. Okay. So, uh, so we have a motion, second to approve this report. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nays. The ayes have it. Mark, you want to pull item one here, but let's go through. Go ahead. Report of the Planning Commission meeting of February eighth, twenty sixteen. All right, so they mo there's a motion by Alderman Tom DeWine, second by Alderman Joe Moore, to approve the report of the Green Bay Plan Commission for the meeting held on Monday, February 8th. Um, Alderman Stoyer is pulling item one. Are there any other items on this report you wish to hand us separately? And item three. Okay, hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nays. The ayes have it. All items have been approved with the exception of item one and item three. Uh, what are your wishes regarding item one? The motion to approve by Alderman Wispiski, seconded by Alderman Joe Moore. We will go to Alderman Mark Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was at Plan Commission a few weeks back. I missed the last Plan Commission meeting because we had a four-hour traffic meeting, so I couldn't speak up to the matter that is shown here. It's in my district. It's 898 Shawano Avenue. And I guess uh, 15 years ago, this property became a two-family, um, kind of unbeknownst to folks in the city. I guess uh, I'm, I'm more or less stating that we need to be more careful. We need to be careful when we rezone properties, when we look at properties that, you know, we go through the proper um, paperwork, et cetera. And I... I'm not going to fight this right now. It, it is a two-family now. It's, they, they're going to rezone it to two-family. But there were some concerns in the neighborhood. There had been some uh, issues there. There was a stabbing, I believe, uh, and some other activity. And the neighbors were just a little concerned about it. So I, one thing that we have been doing is that we've been taking two-family homes. We've been making them into single-family homes. I'd like to see more of that where possible. It's already a very fairly dense area to begin with. And... Um, yeah. I'm more or less just stating that we need to be more diligent. All right. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second to approve item one. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Item one has been approved. Now, what are your wishes regarding item three? The motion by Alderman Wispiski, seconded by Alderman Joe Moore. Alderman Danzinger, you pulled that one. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Uh, just a couple things on this. One is... Uh, when I was first approached about some of the concerns regarding this transition from uh, General Commercial C1 to Highway Commercial C2, uh, most of the concerns were based on some of the signage as well as uh, the building specifications. However, as we dug into this a little bit further, and we have somebody here that will speak on this, uh, apparently there are some questions as to the ability uh, for this rezoning to take place based on some pre-existing covenants that may or may not allow uh, for um, additional building based on the need for majority of uh, neighboring property owners to have approval on this. So uh, I guess I will let 
that individual speak up in a little more detail on this. So I'd like to make a motion to open the floor for interested parties. All right, so there's a motion by Alderman Danziger, second by Alderman Tom Sladek to open the floor to hear from interested parties. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, the ayes have it. So the floor is now open to the uh, uh, public, and we're speaking specifically about item three, and that's to rezone uh, the property at 1857 Shawano Avenue from general commercial uh, to highway commercial. Sir, if you could just speak up, come up to the podium here, and if you could, uh, I want to make sure the mic's on, and state your name and address. It's on. All right. Hi, Dennis. Dennis yes, sir. Corbett. Go ahead. Um, just as the council member cited, there has to be due diligence in looking at these properties. Yeah, Dennis, I just need to get your address for the record. Oh, then we'll three three five zero Nautical Avenue. Okay. For personal use. It's yeah, just for the record. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, this this property is called the West Acre Subdivision, and the, the uh, zoning or covenants go way back to 1962, I believe, when it was developed. And it's very specific in laying out the legal doctrine for for what has to happen with the property. Um, the main the main item I'll, I'll, I'll express to you is it says the term it says, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Unless an instrument signed by a majority of then owners of the lots has been recorded agreeing to change said covenants in whole or in part, um, we have nothing on record saying that this property can be developed. And being more specific, it also says building type, no building shall be erected, altered, placed, or printed to remain on any lot other than one detached single family dwelling, etc. Um, so I don't. Um, I don't believe, I don't know the legal terms, but usurp, I don't think the city should usurp the property rights of the owners and go ahead without, without having this document recorded and then having the new property owner go forward with it. I think that's properly approached with the city, like the element said, or the city council members do it the right way first. Um, any questions of what, what's been happening? Or? Anybody have any questions for the petitioner? What? Alderman Danziger, go ahead. Discuss the covenants on this, and as well as the uh, need for the majority. There is no record that there was ever any vote or um, discussion by the property owners for approval on the. No, we just conversion. went through not, and I'm sure the current owners would have brought that forward for their own legal protection. Um, okay. It's it just something that happened with years where, what's going on now? The city approved it without without the tenants or new owners knowing there's a process to follow. Understand. And I think that's a proper legal way to approach this. Um, I, I, the little that I know legally. I mean, no, no, no. And, and that's the thing, too. I'll admit I'm not a, 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 an, uh, an attorney when it comes to uh, land law either. So I guess if it is just a matter of going through the process of getting uh, the okay. majority of area property owners or that are part of that covenant to have agreement on the ability to transition to the new zoning type, I think that's really all that's required at this point. I know you have some obje objections to it, but I think you're looking more just making sure the process is being followed, correct? From the property first, then to the city or the sure. owner. Right. Um, j just so you hear this, that it says uh, the main restricted covenants recorded with Brown County Register of Deeds Office on November 9, 1962, in volume 605 records, page 212, as document 593616. So that's what it's based off of, a okay. legal record. Um, Understood. All right. I have no further questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Else. All right, thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak to this item? All right, I'll enter. All right there's a motion by Alderman Tom DeWay and second by Alderman Mark Stoyer to return to regular order. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it. We're back in regular order. Alderman Danziger, you had the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. If I can ask a question of either uh, legal or Dr. Vonk, uh, just to get a little more clarification on how the covenants work, because uh, I only have a very, very base knowledge of that, and I was under the impression that uh, we do have to go through some sort of approval process if a covenant like that does exist. Well, you want the attorney or the doctor? Uh, I know, it's a tough call. Uh, Dr. Vonk, do you want to take All the first right. stab at that, sir? Go ahead, Kevin. Sure. Uh, thank you, Alderman. Uh, the, this was just brought to my attention today. Okay. Um, so I haven't had a chance to, to fully review. I, I think 
a little bit um, of a heads up in terms of what uh, this is with the covenants. Nothing was presented in terms of um, what came through the plan commission. No, I don't know that's if not it's your fault either. I apologize. Nope. I was just nope. given the information today as well. So. Correct. And I, I, I don't know if that's any reason right now. I mean, if I guess you have two options. It's one, you can send it back to the plan commission and get a review on this in terms of uh, the covenants that exist and, and if they would preclude anything from moving forward. Um, I know Mr. Curry is, is party to part of the um, sellers here. Um, the other is, I mean, we can go through and there's a first reading for ordinance, you know, continue to do that and just have staff report with something back by third ordinance um, reading. And, and if we can't move forward, then we can't move forward at that time. Sure. I mean, it's up to the council's pleasure at this time. I don't know if Tony, I, you haven't seen this yet. I mean. Right. Uh, the only thing I would add is that this is a zoning land use issue. I haven't reviewed the covenant itself either. Uh, and would take a look at it, but I don't know that that ha would have any effect on the zoning aspect of it. It seems to sound like it's more related to erecting a structure. It would be probably more of a private issue that would be with respect to the surrounding property owners uh, in enforcing the covenant than it would affect the zoning. But again, it's something that we could take a look at uh, with respect to how, when it was zoned C1, timing-wise, when the covenants mm -hmm. went into effect, and take a look at that and be prepared for it for the third reading. Sure, and, and and thank you for that insight because the way that it was brought up to me was concerns over some of the building and some of the structural components that um, uh, people had some challenges with and uh, the covenant aspect of this was just brought to me today. So um, I guess what I'd like to to suggest, because uh, I know this does have a third, or I'm sorry, the first reading, which is item number 25 today, um, if possible, I'd still like to have this held just so staff can review that. Um, I would still be open to advancing. Well, from a procedural perspective, I still think I'd be able to hold item three, though, for review from staff. So we wouldn't have to send it back to plan commission. And I wouldn't necessarily have to send it to legal or I think we could just hold for staff to review and then report out at the next council meeting. We could still proceed with the first reading because we still have the third reading for it to fully be reviewed. If we find challenges at the next meeting in regards to the third reading, we would then either hold it or send it back at that point. If that sounds ama well, you know, amicable to all parties. Well, why don't you amend it to, so we could approve this with the understanding of a deeper review by both law and planning. Uh, I mean, if you want to hold it, you yeah, can hold think, it. But I, I think hold is just better from a terminology what, then, perspective. Then, then you're not would, going to approve the first reading because you're you're holding this. Yeah. Well, there's still two independent pieces, though, aren't they? Because we're approving. No, oh, I see what you're saying from a from a report to an ordinance perspective. Um, then I still would prefer just to have both held. What? Second. So why don't you you why don't you make the motion instead of approving uh, item three right. to I hold like item three to hold item three for review by staff, which would be reported at the next meeting. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. So uh, we have a, a motion, a second to amend item three to hold the rezoning of 1857. Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor of that amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. I just to be official, I want to adopt it as amended. Yep. So by Alderman Danzinger, second. seconded by Alderman Weary. Uh, all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. So item three has been held um, till the next council meeting. Okay, clerk. Report of the Redevelopment Authority. All right, we have a motion by Alderman uh, Jerry Wispisky, second by Alderman Joe Moore, to approve the report of the Green Bay Redevelopment Authority. That was for the meeting held on Tuesday, February 9th. Are there any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Item two. Item one. Okay, hearing none others, uh, item one and two are pulled. Hearing none others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. All items have been approved with the exceptions of item one and item two. Now, what are your wishes regarding item one? It's a motion to approve by Alderman Wispisky, second by Alderman Randy Scano. Alderman Zima, you pulled that. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I, I read through this twice, and... You might understand, is this just a preliminary term sheet and that the final terms will come back to the council? Devin? Alderman, you're referring to item one with the term sheet for historic res 
restorations? Yes. yes. That is correct. So we will see this again because when I was looking into it, it was talking about the TIF subsidy would be 50% up to a certain amount, but the amount I didn't find in here. Correct. Uh, because it's a pay go, it's after the fact. What we would do is, is put through, um, you know, based on this, it's, it's agreement for terms. Um, the developer, Historic Restorations LLC, would be responsible for working on some plans, uh, finalizing what the um, ultimate build out would be, a cost on that, and then we'd be able to calculate um, based on what the developer would show in terms of actual rehabilitation cost, eligible TIF expenses, um, to put a potential cap on there. So this will this when, will when when will, come when will that be determined though? That would be determined upon uh, completion of a development agreement, which I think there is a deadline in here for. Uh, sorry, May fifteenth of this year. Okay, so sometime after May fifteenth. We'll be reviewing the, the final proposal then? Correct. Like tonight, we have a development agreement for Pete's Garage. We saw a term sheet for that about three months ago. Okay, that, that was my, my concern. Thank you very much. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so with that, we have a motion and a second to approve item one. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nays. Uh, Your Honor, I did have one more question on that. Right. I'm sorry I, I neglected. It is. Is this a site that has a historic stone on it? Yes. And what is what is the determination to be done with that stone? The term sheet says that stone needs to stay in place unless granted approval by the Historic Preservation Commission to do something else with it. Okay. I, you know, I, we might want to try to restore it. I Someone showed me a picture of what actually it says on there, and it was very interesting. But I, I'll save that for another day. So okay. they, they were concerned okay. about that part of it. All Thank right. You. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry to no, interrupt. We're good. You want to turn your light off then and we'll continue. All right, we're now on to item two. And what are your wishes regarding item two? It's a motion to approve by Alderman Wispiski, seconded by Alderman Tim DeWayne. Alderman Nenning, you pulled out, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to clarify things, this is a, a term sheet just like we had in number one where the development, the full development agreement will be coming through at a later date. But uh, this particular project has been extremely complex, uh, including uh, utility relocations and street vacations and, uh, uh, and a lot of other detail, uh, storm sewer uh, work and, and so on. And uh, at, the, at the meetings last week, this was discussed at both the Planning Commission and the Redevelopment Authority, uh, the, uh, the future of Fred Street on the north end of Fred Street uh, was discussed. Uh, this is an intersection where Fred in, intersects university that was identified as a problem in the University Avenue plan that we uh, talked about, um, that we approved about a year ago. Uh, and uh, since the Redevelopment Authority meeting last week, uh, there has been additional discussion between our Economic Development Director and the developer in this case about the future of Fred Street and the possible vacation of Fred Street and what that would mean to the residents that are there. So uh, as a result of those discussions, I have a motion that I'd like to make. Uh, this would be to amend uh, on page 5G of your report where the, the term sheet is, uh, term number 9. At the end of it, I would add the following, uh, and I'll have a copy for the clerk uh, as soon as I finish here. Um, I would add the following. The project limit may be increased an additional $200,000, which shall also be reflected in the maximum reimbursement of qualified expenditures if Fred Street is vacated in front of tax parcel 21-1714-E-31, which is 607 Fred Street, and or tax parcel 21-1714-E-30, which is 601 Fred Street. So that would be my motion to amend. All right, so we have a, a motion by Alderman Nenning and, and second by Alderman uh, Joe Moore. I want to speak to this motion, and we're going to get to the whole term sheet, but this is what's on the floor right now to add these two parcels on Fred Street, something that's more in compliance, support of the chief and, and DPW. And thanks for your work on that. Dave, yeah, and Alderman Nenning. Um, 
Tom DeWayne, Alderman Tom DeWayne. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. I was at the meet, meeting with Dave on that, and we discussed part of the solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and to further this, what he, what he hasn't said is this could save the city thousands of dollars as the years go by. I mean, we're talking about a lot of money. And so I think it's very important to get this done, and it's really going to not only help us, it's going to help to get uh, things done further and uh, with respect to both parties, I think it's the best thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so we're going to discuss the whole term sheet, but I want to get this amendment on the uh, – we have a, a motion in a second to approve this amendment, so I'd like a voice vote on this Fred Street part. So there's a motion in a second to uh, approve the amendment presented by Alderman Nenning. All in favor of that amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. All right, so uh, I'm going to ask for a, a motion in a second to approve this as, uh, as amended, but uh, we're uh, open now to discussing this term sheet for festival. Tom? Motion to approve as amended, Your Honor. All right, so we have a motion by Alderman Tom DeWayne, second by Alderman Tim DeWayne. Any discussion here? Seeing no lights, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay, the ayes have it. Thank you. Um, could I just impose upon the council? Uh, we approve the term sheet for the uh, development on university. Uh, as we look at the timeline, I mean, tonight is a significant night, but the vacation of a street, which is all part of this redevelopment, requires a 40-day notice. Um, we've been at this project, as, as the alderman, as all of you know, really since September, but we would require a special council meeting. The only item on that meeting will be to begin the process for vacation. The state requires this 40-day notice. So I would ask that um, possibly next Tuesday uh, before personnel and finance at 445 or Wednesday at 445 before parks that we just meet. It's going to be no invocation and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, that one item. There's no money involved. It's just strictly to begin the process for vacation uh, of the state property. And we need the 40 days because uh, of some of the timing on this. So uh, with your approval, can I put that on for 445? For Tuesday. Tuesday, 445. Thank you. If we can get a quorum here, that's what we need. Okay, clerk, let's continue. Report of the Traffic Commission. All right, we have a motion by Alderman Wispiski. Second. Seconded by Alderman Joe Moore to approve the report of the Traffic Commission. That was for the meeting held on Monday, February 8th. Are there any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays. Ayes have it. That report has been approved. Report of the Finance Committee. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Wispiski, second by Alderman Randy Scannell to approve the report of the Finance Committee. That was for the meeting held on Monday, January 25th. Are there any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Seeing no lights, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay, the ayes have it, and that report has been approved. Report of the Improvement and Service Committee. All right, we have a motion by Alderman Wispiski, seconded by Alderman Dave Nenning, to approve the report of the Improvement and Service Committee, and that was for the meeting held on January 27th. Are there any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Seeing no lights, all uh, in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Report of the Personnel Committee. Motion to approve. Right, there's a motion by Alderman Tom DeWayne, second by Alderman Randy Scannell, to approve the report of the Personnel Committee. That was for the meeting held on Monday, January 25th. Are there any items in this report you wish to handle separately? Seeing no lights, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays. The ayes have it. And that report has been approved. Report of the Protection and Welfare Committee. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Randy Scannell, seconded by Alderman Tim DeWayne, to approve the report of the Protection and Welfare Committee when that was for the meeting held on Monday, January 25th. Any items on this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nays, the ayes have it. That report's been approved. Report of the Protection and Welfare Committee granting operator licenses. Second. All right, we have a motion by Alderman Wispiski, second by Alderman Randy Scannell, and that's to approve the report granting operating licenses um, as stated for February 15th. Are there any names you wish to pull from this item or abstain from? I would like to 
to abstain from the list. All right. Hearing no other comments, all in favor of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nays, the ayes have it. All operating licenses have been approved, noting the abstention from Alderman Brian Danzinger. Receive and place on file, check reconciliation register for December and January, and building permit report for January 2016. Right, I have a motion by Alderman Zima, second by Alderman Chris Weary to receive and place on file. The reports are stated by the clerk. Discussion here. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays, ayes have it, and those reports have been received and placed on file. We're under resolutions. You may under suspension of the rules adopt resolutions 12 through 18, 20, and 21 together with one roll call vote. Second. Right, we have a motion by Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Tom DeWayne to suspend the rules for that purpose. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. By Alderman Scannell, second by Alderman Jerry Wispiski. And if you'd please use the board. All right, and those pass unanimously. Thank you. Ordinances first reading, you may enter suspension of the rules. Advance ordinances 22 through 24 to a third reading. To suspend. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Randy Scannell, second by Alderman Jerry Wispiski to suspend the rules for that purpose. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nays, the ayes have it. Motion to advance, motion to advance. by Alderman Randy Scannell, second by Alderman Weary. All in favor of advancement, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nays, the ayes have it, and those have been advanced to the third reading. Don't hold on yours. Yep. Hang on a second. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I thought we already held that, sorry. Do we automatically withhold on 25? We've got to take a vote on that. Okay. Great. So I'll entertain a motion to hold item 25, the zoning. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Tom DeWayne, second by Alderman Brian Danziger to hold item 25. Uh, we can take that on a voice vote. All in favor of holding, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nays, ayes have it. That item has been held. Ordinances third reading, you may enter suspension of the rules, adopt ordinances 26 and 27 together with one roll call vote. All right, there's a, a motion by Alderman Wispiski, second by Alderman Randy Scannell to uh, suspend the rules for that purpose. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. aye. And those opposed, nay, those opposed, nay, the ayes have it. Uh, and a motion to advance, adopt second. by Alderman Randy Scannell, second by Alderman Tom DeWayne. You have to use the board on this. It's 26 and 27. <clears throat> and that passes unanimously. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. All right, there's oh, a motion. Wait, hold on. We got I, I want to make a motion to suspend the rules for reconsideration. All right, there's a motion by Alderman Joe Moore. And what's the item? Uh, traffic and... Uh, Six. Okay, so there's a motion to suspend the rules to take up item six under the traffic report. There's motions by Alderman Joe Moore, second by Alderman Randy Scannell. All in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. Ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Item six is to install school crosswalk signs. No, uh, just the report in general, Your Honor. Um, there's an item missing from the report. All right. The rules are suspended. We're taking up, well, you say item six, not item six, report, not report six. Report six okay. Sorry. All right. You've got the floor. Hang on. Go ahead. Thanks, Your Honor. The uh, item that's missing on here is a no parking um, on the west side of North Baird Street from University Avenue uh, to Day Street. I believe on the report as it was presented, um, it was bumped a couple times. But it's not in the minutes, and it's not, I'm sorry, it's not on the uh, report here, but that was approved at the committee. I, I just, yeah, I believe uh, you. I just want to yeah. check and see why it wasn't reported out. So, Director Grenier, do you have a comment on that? Baird Street, he's looking for some no parking on the west side. That I'm not seeing in the minutes of the Traffic Commission. I was not at that, well, I was at the meeting of the meeting, but then I had to go up to. It's in the minutes? It's in the minutes, but it's not on the report. Number four. Well, if it's not on the agenda, you can't do anything with it. Maybe you can put that on that special meeting next Tuesday. I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean, it's cut and dry. It's, I mean, okay, it's oh, rubber okay. stamped at I'm the I'm sorry. Meeting. Initial requests aren't reported out only when they go through their uh, trial periods. 
Well, you get a 90. Um, sorry, so they're experimenting with it now. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I didn't, I didn't see an action on the report for it, so that's why I'm... Correct. Initial reports often are, are typically not reported out as part of the council report. Okay, so you're copacetic with everything? Perfect. All right, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion all right, Baldwin, Randy, Scannell, second Baldwin, Tom, Dwayne, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed nays, ayes have it, we're adjourned. <laughs> Tom.